Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Levy is here. Vitamin D metabolism. Okay. Most people are deficient in vitamin D, but they don't know. They wake up very tired. They have low immunity. They have very bad skin. Their mental uh, pro is very low. They have mental fogging every time, or brain fogging every single time. And they have malaise and fatigue every single time. Even though they sleep for eight hours, they still wake up. Uh, very very weak and very very tired why is that so possibly one of the reasons why that happens is because of vitamin d deficiency okay foods that we eat that are fortified with vitamin d they don't have any the environments that you're living in some of you who are living in the west there's no enough sunlight so you end up taking synthetic vitamin d and you still have deficiency of vitamin d because the body struggles to assimilate synthetic products so in this video I'm going to talk to you about the metabolism of vitamin D so that you understand all the basics, okay? Now, do you remember that compound that we called acetyl-CoA, the one that we talked about in the Krebs cycle, the cycle that synthesizes energy in the mitochondria? Do you remember it? This acetyl-CoA is the end result of breakdown of carbohydrates, breakdown of protein, and breakdown of fats. And this is what is fed, is fed into them. Uh, energy cycle that is called the Krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle to help you produce ATP. If you don't remember, you can simply pause and go back and review the video that we did about the energy metabolism and how these foods are actually converted into energy. Okay. Now, acetyl CoA is the same compound that the liver can use to make cholesterol. Okay. So it builds it up to make cholesterol. And cholesterol is now stored under the skin. So the cholesterol that is stored under the skin can act as one of the major sources of internal production of vitamin D and then vitamin D is also found in diet. So those are the two sources of vitamin D majorly. One is the cholesterol that is stored beneath your skin and this one that is stored beneath your skin needs to be activated to form inactive vitamin D and then later on activated to form vitamin D, the active one. Okay, So look at it this way. We synthesize cholesterol from acetyl-CoA through the liver. We store it under the skin and then we get an exposure from the sun, the UV radiation that hits uh, this cholesterol to, to make it, uh, to convert it to an inactive form of vitamin D. And then this inactive form of vitamin D is carried in the bloodstream, supplied all the way to the liver for activation. And the, less, the, the last stage of activation of vitamin D happens in the kidneys. So for you to have enough vitamin D or sufficient vitamin D amounts, one, there must be enough cholesterol, whether coming from the diets or whether coming from the liver. Number two, so you must have another functional organ that is the liver. The liver must be very functional. That's why most people who have a fatty liver disease, whether knowing or unknowingly, they end up having vitamin D deficiency because the liver is the one that activates vitamin D. And then you must have a functional kidney. So people who have diabetes end up having low vitamin D because of a messed up kidney. So two organs that are very important, the liver and the kidney, they must be intact and well functioning. And then you must have a very... Uh, a well uh, nourished skin and then you must have dietary supply of cholesterol or even supply of cholesterol from the liver those are the sources so now this is the first source the cholesterol under your skin hit by uv radiation and somebody will ask me what time of the day should we enjoy the sunlight i will tell you enjoy the sunlight at about 30 minutes to one hour every single day uh, a time of your choice possibly near midday where you have this strong rays of uv radiation that will actually activate that cholesterol to uh, inactive vitamin d so two sources one is that cholesterol in the skin, and the other one is the dietary sources of vitamin D. Now remember, we have vitamin D3 and vitamin D2. All these are biologically active, so they, uh, they can be used interchangeably. They are biologically active, but we'll talk about that. So in the diets, we have fish, that's a rich source of vitamin D. We have fatty meats, of course, the rich source of cholesterol that will be used to synthesize vitamin D. We have egg yolks, we have breast milk, we have bone broth and mushrooms. All these are dietary sources of vitamin D, okay? So remember we have two sources, either diets or we get it from the liver and then we activate it through the sunrise, sun, sun rays. So do not be lied to that the sun is a source of vitamin D, it's not, okay? The sun is actually just activating the cholesterol to just initiate the process of forming vitamin D. Once you've understood that, do not run away from the sun. The sun will not give you skin cancer. If any case, the sun will give you vitamin D that will protect you from getting those cancers. Now, vitamin D2 is called ego calciferol. Vitamin D3 is called cholecalciferol. Remember, both of uh, the two are still active and they can actually be interchanged or interused, okay? So, all of them are 
coming from the cholesterol under the skin or the dietary sources. Now, this is hit by the sun uh, on the skin and then it is carried now because now the cholesterol, the seven dehydrocholesterol in the skin, this is the type of cholesterol that is sold under the skin. When the sun hits it, we change this seven dehydrocholesterol to a type of vitamin D that is active. We carry it all the way to the liver to actually make another type of vitamin D. So in the liver, there's an enzyme that is called hydroxylase, which basically adds an OH group on the, on the cholesterol to form 25 hydroxy vitamin D. Okay, its name is calcidiol. So this calcidiol is actually one of the inactive forms of vitamin D. Once you've converted cholesterol, activated it and carried it to the liver to form uh, 25 hydroxy vitamin D, we call it the name that is uh, calcidiol. Now, this calcidiol has to be carried to the kidneys for further activation. So this process of the first activation, the first step of activation of vitamin D happens in the liver. And then it's now carried, the, five, the 25 hydroxy vitamin D is now carried to the kidneys for final activation. So this is the active compound of vitamin D and this happens in the kidneys. So now we activate, we simply add another OH group on there. Uh, 25 hydroxy vitamin D to form 125 dihydroxy vitamin D because now there are two hydroxy groups that's why you call it dihydroxy so di for two hydroxy for hydroxyl groups added on position one and 25 of the vitamin D so now we have 125 dihydroxy vitamin D which is now called calcitriol this was calcidiol this is calcitriol okay now this is the active form of this now understand this is basically just breaking down and coming up with the active vitamin D that now is useful in the body. You can use it to synthesize, uh, to actually send calcium into the bones, bone development and function, all that, immune system, gut function, kidney function, all this are coming as a result of vitamin D being activated by the same, same kidneys. Now, in blood, when you're going to test for vitamin D, but before I go to the blood, I want you to see this. When you're converting 25 hydroxy vitamin D into 125 hydroxy vitamin D, so the inactive form into the active form, when you form more of the active form, there's a negative feedback. There's a channel that blocks now more formation of, more of conversion of vitamin D, uh, inactive vitamin D to active vitamin D. So the active part inhibits its own formation, and that's how we regulate vitamin D so that we don't end up having excess. But the conversion of this to this, the inactive to the active one, is actually activated by the hormone called parathyroid hormone. So parathyroid hormone stimulates the, the conversion of vitamin D the inactive form to the conversion of uh, vitamin D, the active form. But after forming this, now we have a negative feedback so that we don't produce more of it. But the parathyroid gland, because you see if you have deficiency of vitamin D, what happens is the parathyroid gland is actually produced to usually go to the bone and do bone resorption, break down the bone to release calcium in the blood. Because remember, vitamin D is re responsible for deposition of calcium in, from the blood into the bone. But when you have deficiency of vitamin D, there's now low calcium in the system. And now the parathyroid hormone is triggered and produced and goes to the bone to break it down to produce a calcium. And then all the process goes back to normal. We still go back to the same same entire process. Now, when you're trying to do a test for vitamin D in blood, you will not do a test for this active form. The test that is normally done is for the inactive form. And this, there is a reason. The reason is... This active form is actually acted upon by a lot of enzymes, including parathyroid hormone, a lot of hormones, sorry. So it is strictly regulated by hormones and the negative feedback. So if you take a test for this active form of vitamin D, you might end up finding the wrong results. So the, the one that is tested in blood for the deficiency of vitamin D is actually this inactive form of vitamin D. Why? Because it's not uh, responding to any hormones and above, or it's not strictly regulated by hormones and it doesn't have to go through the negative feedback. That's why we use this one. Now, normal levels of this in blood, if you have levels that are above 30 nanograms per ml, that is sufficient amounts. If you have 21 to 29 nanograms per ml, that is insufficient. So basically you need supplementation or you need to up your game in the kitchen. If you have less than 20 nanograms per ml, that basically tells you now you are deficient. So those who have uh, below 20 uh, nanograms per ml, they are deficient. So they will really need the supplementation They'll really need to enjoy the sun and they'll really need to change the diets so that they get to top up their levels to above 30 nanograms, okay? All right. Now, some of the things to note with vitamin D. Magnesium is very important in functioning loss absorption of vitamin D. Remember that 
when you have low magnesium what you're going to cause is you're going to cause low calcium in the system and you will trigger the parathyroid hormone now this will cause resorption of the bone this will mean that now you have to break down the bone and release calcium into the blood and that will cause you weak bone so therefore sometimes when you have low vitamin d it's always necessary to consume as you consume the supplements for vitamin d you can also consider consuming the supplements for magnesium okay also something that you should note that vitamin d and stress levels do not go hand in hand why because vitamin d uh, stress when you have high stress in the system you cause production of a hormone that is a stress hormone called cortisol now cortisol increases the production of glucose from the liver why because we want this glucose to help you cope with the stress that you're actually going through so when you have high stress levels you have high hom uh, hormone cortisol which will produce glucose from the liver will cause production of glucose from the liver extended stress or prolonged stress or chronic stress is a problem because you have high glucose in the system that can be diabetes which is a problem to the bones because of kidney function but this glucose the cortisol now has to actually make sure that the body taps glucose from the bone and taps glucose from the muscle so when you are resorbing the bone releasing also the nutrients and releasing the glucose into the system you're actually causing weak bones and that's what you call osteoporosis when you're working on muscles to release muscle glucose, convert muscle proteins into glucose so that you can actually handle the stress levels, you're affecting muscle, causing muscle atrophy. This is very weakness, uh, a weakness in the muscles, and this is weakness in the bones, causing fractures and all that. Okay, so please, as you're consuming the vitamin D supplements, also consider consuming magnesium supplements. And we've known magnesium is very rich in avocados, in pumpkin seeds. It's also rich in nuts and you can consider those foods and green leafy vegetables to boost your magnesium levels because that's the natural form of magnesium and as you eat the eggs the fish the uh, the bone broth and the mushrooms to give you the vitamin d you can also consider cons consuming the avocados the nuts uh, and the pumpkin seeds to boost the magnesium because they go hand in hand okay so this is basically vitamin d metabolism and once you understand this you'll know if you have a low level of this why what you should do now you should consume more and for you to actually raise the vitamin D levels in the system, of course, you must have a functional gut to absorb uh, the essential nutrients that are used, the magnesium uh, and, the, and the fats that are actually used to form the vitamin D or the cholesterol. Also, you must have a very well-functioning skin. And you know very well, skin problems are gut problems. So you must fix the gut through fasting, eating healthy, sleeping, easing up on stress levels and reducing the amount of drugs that are going into your system uh, entirely so that you can actually get this, okay? Right. So as you do this, as you watch this, as you supplement your diets, make sure everything is now taken in consideration. And if you're doing vitamin D supplements, please consider doing vitamin D3 plus K2 supplements because this is a well-known uh, combination to actually help you achieve your goals in terms of the sufficiency of vitamin D and sending calcium from the system, uh, from the bloodstream into the bone so that you can actually have those strong bones. Okay. So I thought you should know this. And once you understand this, when you talk about vitamin D and all that, uh, in, in future videos, you can simply understand the basis. So this is vitamin D metabolism.